episode of Off the Clock, you know, we talk a lot about young people, about the education system, about social media, what they're consuming on social media. Well, The Daily Show apparently is also interested in that. And one of their correspondents sat down with a few young people to ask them questions, obviously um, non-biased, non-posed questions whatsoever, to some young people to get their thoughts on the state of the world, social media, all of that jazz. So let's dive into this because I'm interested to see how they set all of this up. As the father of a child about to start school, I wanted to know about how they felt about the culture wars. And more importantly, I low-key wanted to know if they thought I was cool. So instead of tweeting oh God, about the kids, song. I decided I to talk him. to them. Adults are arguing a lot right now about what you should be learning, what subjects you should be taught, what books you should be reading. But we never asked you, how do you feel about school? What are your favorite books? What books are you guys reading right now? I love like racial justice books because I feel no! That was fast. That can't be real, Bobby. That can't be real. Oh my gosh. Guys, I'm not gonna go after kids in this video, obviously. I'm not an asshole, but I will go after the guy posing the questions, the people that prep them for the questions, and their damn parents. Because it's very easy to go like, oh, we want kids for this video, and then you're obviously gonna vet them before they go on air. You're not gonna pick, like, the Christian homeschooling kids. <laughs> Guarantee does not fit into it. Like the hate you give or like um, blended. How do you feel about people wanting to ban those books? Not good because like I feel like you need to, this is what, it's what's happening in the world right now. Do you feel like your teachers are trying to indoctrinate you? No. no. Do you know what the word indoctrinate means? No. <laughs> oh God. Full disclosure, first grade when I was still in a public school, I think that was the 2008 election. We had like a first grade election. I had no freaking clue what was going on. All I knew was that my parents were voting for Romney. I had no idea what either of the men did, what the parties were. I was just like, my mommy said she's voting for Mitt Romney. I'm not voting for Barack Obama. I went to like a very, very lib um, magnet school in like a hipster part of town. And so obviously, Obama won in the classroom. I don't really know what else happened other than that, but literally we were all standing there bickering about what our parents were saying. I was not talking about this because my mom had sat me down and said, you know, honey, Mitt Romney. No, it was just because I listen. I hear their conversations. I, you know, my dad, I think was probably gonna vote for Obama because usually their votes canceled each other out, which is a totally different story. But like, I was not, you know, in those conversations, but that was my only exposure to elections in the first grade, understanding any part of politics. So I'm just saying that because I remember being that age. I remember being asked about, you know, the presidency and elections and having no freaking clue because it was all fun and games. All right, anyway, let's see what they say. Thoughts on the president and the current administration? I think it's good. Mm. I feel like he's a lot better than Trump in my mm. opinion. Sure. I feel like he's not the best president. We definitely had better presidents, but he's a big step up from Trump. What about this era feels different from other presidential. You, they're not old enough to know. I'm barely old enough to know anything other than like the last two or three presidents. Obviously I've studied history now. I'm an adult, I can read books, but prior to the age of 15, I would not be able to have answered that question at all. Why are you asking them this? Ask him anything about what Trump did. And about, oh, he was really, really mean. Why are you asking kids that? How old is too old to be president? Too old to be president? is an age where you're scared that you might not live to see the next day <sighs> because a country is depending on you right. to yeah. run them. I mean, also, as long as you don't have any like mental health problems, like say you have dementia and you're sort of losing your memory a little bit. Oh, so maybe this girl's based. <laughs> She's like, I'm gonna walk a fine line here. You're eerily describing what Joseph R. Biden is going through right now. <laughs> okay, that's actually... Oh God. A lot of the things that I'm talking about right now, you don't have a lot of control over, but there is something you do control, culture. So let's talk about pop culture. True. Elon Musk. <laughs> Billionaire. Yeah. Huh? Oh, he owns Tesla and SpaceX. Um, Twitter, I mean. Twitter, yeah. Do you think he's doing a good job running Twitter? Quinn, how are you feeling about the way I, he's I think he's running it pretty badly because he did a bunch of stuff that's like not good. Right. Like he got rid of a bunch of things and tried to just make the most money out of it. Yeah. But he's he lost, he lost a lot of money. Taylor Swift. Hero, icon, villain. I don't know. She just doesn't sit right with me, I guess. <laughs> okay. Oh. Any other thoughts on T, um, T Swift? I don't really know a lot about her, and I don't want to say things 
um, about topics I don't know about. So that's all I really know. That's solid. So you're just saying if you don't know about something, you'll just say, hey, I don't know, or I don't have an opinion about that. You know what? More people should do that. Actually, adults should learn from that because it's okay to say, hey, I'm really not sure. I'll let somebody else handle that. I do that all the time because we're all experts in different fields. We're all interested in different things. It's fine. That girl, I like everything that she's saying. She's on top of it. It's really refreshing. Um, True. Hassan, I agree. Bad Bunny. Uh. <laughs> what? I, I can't even figure out who Bad Bunny is, guys. How do these kids know? And I don't. Bad Bunny, I don't think that's appropriate, right? Why do they know? Why are they all snickering? I don't even pay attention. I love him, but I don't think my age should be listening to it. If you, yeah. if you don't understand Spanish, then it's like, okay, it's really good. But yeah. if you understand it, yeah, then it's I like, Spanish. Oh. Whoa. Whoa. Uh, sorry, I don't speak Italian. There's there's lots of artists whose music is really good, but their yeah. person, them as a person themselves is not great. So how do you resolve that? What do you guys do? What? How do you come to terms with that? I listen to an I art. still listen to the music, yeah, I still, honestly. I still listen to them. <laughs> what are you going to do? So you should just said, oh, it's not appropriate. I don't think we should be listening to it, but I'm going to listen to it. You know whose job it is to mitigate that? The parents. Apparently your kids are more self-aware that what you are allowing them to listen to is not good, and yet they are going to continue doing it because you're not stepping in because you're too busy doing Pilates or some shit. Even with like movies yeah. and actors who are probably not the best people, yeah. you can still enjoy their work and not appreciate um, the bad things that they have done. Got it. There you go. Yeah, I, I personally am like a superhero fan. Yeah. And the Flash teaser got, was released. Right. And I'm, there's like a lot of controversy around Ezra Miller and like right. what he's done. Yeah. But like the movie itself looks really good. So you have to be able to like respect that. This all sounds like very reasonable, nuanced opinions. I suggest you never put that opinion on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It sounds like, That's you true. know. I'm not sure that I want to go to the movie for that. Or it's just... It, I'm, I'm kind of more of like a stay-at-home type of guy. Okay. Yeah. I mean, what better way to sum up this generation that has been raised in the midst of lockdown, that has everything on their computers. Like, listen, I don't even really like going to the movies, but it's because I don't like watching movies. Not because I'm a stay at home kind of guy. Please get your children out, get them touching grass, kicking rocks, meeting people. Do not let your children become Basement dwellers. I'm not saying this young man is. He seems lovely. Great kid. Do not allow that to continue. <laughs> and also being able to separate art from the artist because, you know, as much as I hate Ezra Miller and think that he is literally a piece of shit, there are other people that have spent years working on, you know, that project that have poured their heart and soul into that. And I don't think that should be completely thrown away because of that. Do I think that he should be hired again? No, but Again, there's other people involved. Also, you should be able to look at things, you know, regardless of politics and try to find enjoyment in it. Oh God, taxes. When you're a member of society, you have to pay taxes. How much should you pay in taxes? Like what percentage? It should really depend on like, if you're a billionaire and like you pay less taxes than- But what about you personally? Like if you had a fruit by the foot. I like that girl, but that's such a parroted talking point of like, oh, billionaires need to pay more. They do pay their fair share. The tax breaks that they get are because they are literally giving away their money or they are starting new businesses. Obviously people who are evading taxes, even though, <laughs> Say the line, Bart! I think taxation is theft. Yay! They usually get caught, they are reprimanded for that. But billionaires do pay their fair share. What I actually want to hear their opinion on is like inflation and the economy and why they need to be investing in precious metals with Bullion Max. Because 2022 was the worst year for the stock market since 2008. Have the policies changed? Is inflation getting better? Is the government spending less money? No. Which is why you should seriously consider diversifying your savings into precious metals like gold and silver. Historically, gold and silver have been the preferred hedge against inflation by the wealthiest Americans. Fortunately, thanks to Bullion Max, it is now affordable for you and me to own silver and gold to store your home in your safe or maybe in a hole in your backyard. Click the link in the description or head to bullionmax.com slash cooper for your own silver and gold starter kit today. Get started with five ounces of silver and a one gram gold bar shipped directly to your home fully insured. This month, Bullion Max will pay for the shipping. Again, that is bullionmax.com slash cooper to get started today. Like, why aren't we showing kids shiny precious metals and not fruit by the foot? That is much more exciting. How much of that fruit by the foot should go to the government and how much should belong to you? All of it. Probably like 30%, I don't know. 30%. Oh. So 
So up to here. Did I say that's like 30? Lower. Oh. Lower? Like you want to lower, Sophia? No. 40's a lot for Four, tax. It's 40, but that goes, that goes to schools, roads. Oh, that makes me feel yes, guilty. But it's coming from now you feel guilty, right? People. Oh my God. It depends on your income. You know where else it goes? Stupid social justice initiatives. The roads in Nashville are terrible. The roads in California, terrible. What are my taxes doing? Nothing, apparently. All the places I've lived, Boise actually, incredible roads. They have some of the best roads in the country. I will happily give you some of my paycheck for that because they actually take care of it. These terrible schools, no. I want to take my tax money elsewhere and educate my kids in a different way. They also use our tax dollars to pay corrupt politicians. And they also use our tax dollars to send it overseas to other corrupt politicians. They also use our tax dollars to do stupid things like buying the corrupt politicians fancy chairs and doing fun experiments on animals. Just wait until Ron Paul's report every single year. It's the best and worst day of the year for me because I see where all of our money is actually gone. Gotta match what was happening in the 70s and 80s. We're gonna go 80%. Ah! That's yours. This is yours. This goes to Look schools, shock. roads, highways, what? et cetera. Now, if you take this, you're a good person. But if you don't, you're a part of the problem. What? Why? Look at all of their faces. What are you doing? That is not non-biased whatsoever, especially when you frame it as if you want to be an activist, if you want to be a good participant of society, this is what it's got to be. What are you saying? You're making them so uncomfortable. Oh, this feeling. is something a lot of men in their 30s don't talk about, feelings. How do you process things when you're sad or angry? I kind of get mad at my parents. Whenever I get mad at them, I kind of don't like it. I don't only go to my room, but like, they'll come in and they always think they're right so they're never gonna apologize. They wanna be right when sometimes they're not right. Like, they just can't say sorry sometimes. But if parents said sorry, then that means parents and children are equal. But you can't have that. What? You can't. What is going on here? Parents can absolutely say sorry. And if these kids are not experiencing that, then I'm sorry for them. Because you should be able to have disagreements with your parents and talk about it and say, I'm sorry. Even if it's just, I'm really sorry that what is happening is making you feel this way. And I'm acknowledging that this is tough. That, why is that? Oh my God. What if um, the hypothetical person is 37 years old and men of that age don't really um, hang out with one another? I would say this hypothetical person, if you're trying to like convey your feelings without feeling any pressure, maybe you should seek a therapist for that. Yeah. If you're trying to express your feelings. You need like an outlet. So something that just distracts you from all the problems. Mm -hmm. That's true. I'm sad. Oh. I'm sad. Mm -hmm. okay. They're sad. Mm -hmm. They are sad. That's just weird. Like, dude, why are you unloading on kids? I know you're trying to be funny, but that's odd. Let's talk about social media. Are we on social media? TikTok, Instagram, mm. Facebook, Twitter? Oh, Lord. I feel like Twitter's old. I think it's like, like for old people. Yeah, yeah. for old people. <laughs> really? It's turned into like, you know how like Facebook like died? Twitter yeah. is kind of like dying. Twitter, Damn. Twitter. I don't know what Twitter y'all are on, but mine is popping off every single freaking day. Everybody's yelling at everybody. It doesn't mean that it's a great place, but it's very much being used. Could you survive if someone took your phone? No. Yes. 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 Entirely. Because mm -hmm. yeah. I don't have my phone right now. Because there's like so many other things you can do just like outside of your phone, just like activities. That's so yeah. nice. Oh, that girl does not like it. Yeah, I'm. I'm. What? What does that mean? I'm gonna survive without my phone. <laughs> Why? It's, your I children like, should be able to survive without like, their phones. Like, I don't have much interest in social media. Are nice. your parents on the phone too much? I feel like my dad always says I'm on the phone too much, but I, kind of every time I look at him, he's always on like. Slack or something. I, I just want to tell him, yeah, get off your phone, Dad. Get off your phone, Dad. You need to maintain a better work-life balance. You heard him, parents. Stop <laughs> watching this on your phone and go hang out with your kids. I mean, that's a nice last message. That, I mean, that was wild. Some of those kids were very based, but it was so obvious that so many of those questions are pointed in a way. I mean, the fruit by the foot thing, that was just wild. This whole thing, like, they're just using kids as props. And then he was making the kids feel guilty for things, was confusing them about things for adult humor. Like, come on, guys. But I have hope with the blonde chick. She doesn't like social media. She's pretty nuanced. Maybe things aren't so terrible after all. 
Before you go, make sure that you like this video if you have not already, subscribe to this channel and ring that notification bell so that you never miss a single comment section or off the clock episode. We are putting out new content every day, sometimes twice a day and even on weekends now and I don't want you to miss a thing.